Given how cold it is in Colorado, it takes a little more power than usual to keep all my aquariums at tropical temperatures. So I thought it might be kind of cool if I tried an unheated aquarium for the first time with no heater at all. So this is my five gallon office tank and it used to hold betta fish in the past, but with this unheated kind of setup, I decided to first go with cherry shrimp, specifically Bloody Mary shrimp. They have a clear shell, but a really deep red tissue underneath it. And that's what gives them that very intense scarlet hues that you see. So I got them super thrilled with them. They're already having babies. Like most Neocaridinia shrimp, they do like pH levels that are more alkaline, 7.0 and above, as well as some minerals in the water. More importantly, they can go from 60 degrees to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Height. So definitely can go in the cooler ranges. Now the reason why I got them first for this aquarium is because I knew eventually I wanted to add tank mates. So the thought is, you know, most fish that you add in with cherry shrimp, they are going to go after the babies, even if they don't go after the adults. So I wanted the shrimp to get in there first because so they could start breeding, build up the colony a little bit, and then add the second tank mate. What I ended up going with was clown killifish. I've never owned killifish before and they are an absolute delight. So they're very, very tiny, maybe like, I don't know, an inch, an inch and a half maximum, including the tail. And they get their name from, I guess a lot of fish are called clown if they have that vertical striping banding that kind of looks like zebras. And then they also are sometimes called the rocket killifish because the males get this beautiful fiery tail that has all sorts of rainbow colors, including blue, reds, oranges, yellows, gorgeous. I also got them because they stay very, very tiny and tiny fish have tiny mouths that hopefully won't go after the adults as much. When I first got them, they were very curious about the shrimp. So they kind of were investigating the shrimp, which was causing the shrimp to jump back. But after a few days, they got used to each other. And now they really mostly stay up top versus the cherry shrimp are kind of mostly grazing on the bottom and then climbing all over the plants and the walls. Clown killifish only go from 67 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but I've heard actually since they have a shorter lifespan, it's actually better to keep them on the cooler end of the scale. Now they've been living together for about a couple months now and they're definitely getting along. Like I don't see as many baby, like newborn cherry shrimp out anymore, but they're definitely surviving because I have seen more and more juveniles pop up. So the babies are just doing a better job of hiding from the clown killifish. Now that's all the fish I plan on putting in this because it's only a five gallon aquarium. But while I was doing my research, I definitely found a lot of other cool water species that a lot of them really don't like to go above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So they really would prefer an unheated aquarium at room temperatures or even outdoors in a pond. So let me cover those for you. So the first continent I'm going to cover is Asia, and we've got the white cloud mountain minnows coming from, you guessed it, white cloud mountain in China. They can go from about 65 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and they get about an inch and a half long. This is a peaceful schooling community fish. It's got a horizontal stripe along its body, and so some people do call it the poor man's neon tetra because they are sometimes sold as feeder fish. I think they're really pretty, especially the 24 karat version as well as the long fin. I want to keep the long fin white clouds one day. I've heard they're pretty easy to spawn, especially for egg layers. You just kind of put a lot of spawning mobs or dense foliage in there and they will lay eggs and the adults don't necessarily predate a lot on their young. And so one day my dream is to do kind of a, maybe next year, an outdoor mini pond and have long fin white cloud minnows in there. This is a fish that it's interesting it's not as popular in the hobby anymore even though it's one of the first freshwater aquarium fish ever kept in fish tanks besides you know like koi and goldfish that were started off as pond fish and so the paradise fish is a type of gourami that comes from east asia they get about two and a half to three inches there's several color varieties but the normal variety has very beautiful i would say blue and red orange tiger stripes on it and then it has this forked tail that's a little red orange as well. Very, very beautiful. They can go from 61 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit in maybe like a 20 gallon aquarium or bigger. I would call them kind of semi-aggressive, maybe like a betta fish or a dwarf gourami where you can keep them in a community tank if you have the right 
tank mates. So definitely, you know, avoid any slow moving or long finned fish and go for something that's equally as fast and feisty, maybe giant danios or loaches. That'd be a good one to, to pair them up with. I've mentioned the dojo loach before. It's a very common goldfish tank mate. They get to be like about a foot long hot dog looking shaped fish with lots of little barbels around the mouth and then kind of this mottled brown back and a lighter colored belly on it. Very, very cool. I definitely want to keep them one day. They have the nickname of weather loach because when the barometric pressure changes before a storm, they start getting really crazy and hyper. But their other nickname is pond loach and that's because they can go from, I think they prefer about 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, but they can go as low as 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And that kind of makes sense because they are found in countries or areas like Siberia, Korea, and China. However, they're so hardy that they've been finding new wild populations pop up all over the place in Europe, the US, Canada, and Australia. Now we're gonna leave Asia and head over to Oceania to talk about the empire gudgeon. Yay, an oddball fish, I love it. Males, they tend to be bigger and more colorful than females. So about four and a half inches, the males can get a nuchal hump and then they have all sorts of colors on them. They have kind of a tannish, olive green body, the face and belly get reddish, and then the fins have that famous white, black, and red banding on them. According to Fish Face, they can go from 50 degrees Fahrenheit all the way to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a really, really wide range. Obviously, they probably prefer something more in the middle. And then like mollies, they can survive in anything from freshwater to saltwater. This is a really lively, outgoing oddball fish. Uh, they can get a bit territorial though, especially if they're in the breeding mood. So make sure to provide lots of hides as well as things that block line of sight to keep them peaceful. After our brief stop in Oceania, we are gonna spend the majority of the rest of our time in North America, where I would say a lot of these cool water species are not tolerant of warm temperatures. So first up on the list would be rainbow shiners. They get about two to three inches schooling fish, and they kind of remind me of zebra danios in terms of being torpedo shaped and very, very fast and energetic. Now, when you first see them at the fish store, they probably are, well, gonna be juveniles and they kind of look just like a normal drab looking minnow with a horizontal stripe on them. But when you check out their breeding colors, oh my goodness, we're talking about magenta red, pink, neon blue, purple, orange, black. I mean, just everything absolutely amazing. They're mostly found in the southeastern parts of the United States, so I would say 50 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit at the highest. Unfortunately, they don't live very long, so most hobbyists who get them do want to try to breed them. And in fact, huge thank you to Fish Folk for providing this amazing footage of them in their breeding garb. You can check out more videos of these rainbow shiners on their channel over here. We got another crustacean on our list, love them. The electric blue crayfish. There's actually a lot of common names like Florida crayfish, blue lobster. There's also the a white variant I've seen where they're called like white specter crayfish, vanilla lobster. It's all the same species, just different colors. As per their common name, they do come mostly from the Florida region. We're living around, I guess most websites say 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, but there was this guy, I saw his website that he was breeding them and he swore nothing above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So take that as you will. I do see them in fish stores quite a bit, which is interesting because they're not safe for plants. They will like dig them up or eat them because uh, they do eat vegetables. Really, they eat everything. They are really good at escaping so make sure you have a tight lid and you know cover up all those holes in there and then they're not the best community tank mate either because they can grow to about four to six inches so really anything they can get in their claws they're gonna try to stuff in their mouths now you might try keeping them with let's say fast moving schooling fish that stay mostly in the upper half so maybe the white cloud mountain minnows we mentioned before, zebra danios, just as long as you're okay with a few of them missing every once in a while. Like most crustaceans, they are going to enjoy that harder water. So make sure to add minerals if you need to, and then feed them foods that are enriched with calcium, you know, iodine and other minerals. So they'll have good, healthy molts. Another fish from Florida is the Florida flagfish. And the flagfish name comes from those red horizontal stripes on it, and then the shoulder patch. This is the males, they're a lot more colorful, and it kind of looks like the stars and stripes of the United States flag. They get about two and a half 
inches long, and they are a type of puffish, which is a type of killifish, actually. They can live in a wide range of temperatures, 64 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. However, Fish Base says that they are actually a subtropical species and really prefer to stay below 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Like mollies, they have this kind of wide, flat mouth that's really good at picking off kind of hair types of algae. However, in their enthusiasm for going after algae, they may sometimes pick at your more delicate plants. So just be aware of that. You might want to keep them with more hardier, thicker leaf plants. Also, the males can get territorial and fin nip. So if you want to put them in a community setting, try to put them with really fast, shorter finned fish like zebra danias. Of course, I couldn't do a cool water species list without mentioning axolotls. Yes, I used to keep them back in the day and they're really, really cool. They basically look like juvenile salamanders for their entire lives where they have these frilly gills uh, on the side of their heads. They're entirely aquatic and yeah, they get to about nine to 12 inches while in captivity. There's many, many colors to choose from. And then some of them have GFP, green fluorescent protein uh, in their DNA, which can be passed down genetically uh, through breeding. And so that allows them to glow green under blue or black lighting. They originally came from high altitude lakes in Mexico, so they enjoy temperatures from 60 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I had an issue keeping them below 68 degrees Fahrenheit, especially during the summertime. But what I did was basically kept the lid open and used evaporative cooling with a little mini fan constantly blowing on the top of the water. However, you know, that leads to obviously a lot of evaporation, constant top offs. If I were going to do it again in the future, I would probably just save up and spend the money on a chiller. Yes, axolotls are really cute when you see them in the pet store or the reptile store. However, just word of warning, I would say they're more active and to me interesting as juveniles versus when they get to adulthood, they're kind of more ambush predators that don't really move around as much. So don't just get one because you're buying into all the Minecraft hype. As for how my five gallon cool water tank is going, Confession time, I ended up putting a heater in here. And the reason why is without the heater, during the winter time, I found the temperatures were around 67 degrees Fahrenheit in the daytime. And then at night, it was probably dropping lower than that. And I really wanted to see more shrimp breeding. So I ended up putting a heater in here, raising it to about 72 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've been pretty happy with the results. Let me know down in the comments if I missed your favorite cool water fish. Otherwise, if you live in a toasty climate that is closer to the equator, check out my top 10 hot water fish that you gotta try out next. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video.